welcome to our New Frontiers Digital, our series of 2020 in, uh, as part of the EHF offering to all of you. Uh, this is something new that we wanted to try to make it work for you and, and the fellows to connect with the rest of the world and, and get the fellows to, to share their experience as fellows and their knowledge. I'm super excited for today's session because I, I got to know Evelyn and Eric before even uh, EHF had applications and, and before I was part of EHF. So it's really exciting to see how far we both have come. Um, so um, I'm looking forward for today's session. And on today, a few things. Uh, they will do their presentation and then after that we'll have time for questions and answers. Uh, feel free to post any questions you have in the chat window and then by the end of the session, if those questions haven't been answered in, as part of the session, we will uh, ask them. There will be time for that. And um, mute yourself if, not, if you are not speaking. And I, as I said, we will be recording this session. We are recording at the moment. And uh, we look forward to, to hearing more and learning more from you, Emeline and Eric. Uh, if you have any technical support, uh, you can get in touch with Michelle. Um, Michelle Cole that is over there, co-host, um, and or me on the chat. And if you have questions, post them in the everyone chat. Don't post it on private as it's so it's easier for all of us to read them. And over to you, Emily and Eric. Great. Uh, thanks, Paula. And uh, yeah, Tenakoto uh, Katoa. Good morning, everybody. Um, and it's really nice to see some, yeah, some very familiar faces um, on the screen. And so let me just uh, start this, just to share the screen here. And we have some slides um, to show you. Cool. Great. Yeah, again, so uh, I'm Emily Pat Dahlstrom. And uh, I'm Eric Dahlstrom. And so uh, uh, this session is really about our experience uh, starting a company uh, in New Zealand. So it's all uh, based on our lessons learned. Um, we're not really experts, so just wanted to to uh, point that out. Um, so we'll we'll go through uh, uh, like our, our presentation, but just feel free to uh, put your questions on on the chat uh, as well. And then now uh, we'll we'll try to answer um, all of those questions after. Um, so before we kind of like go to the outline of, of what we're going to be presenting, I just wanted to give you a little bit more of a background about ourselves, uh, just in context to what we'll be uh, talking about. So uh, there's three of us, um, and as uh, Paula said, uh, we we come from um, we are from California. We were from the first uh, uh, batch that came over in 2017. Um, there's uh, there's yeah, we're, we're from uh, Northern California. I'm also from the Philippines. And our backgrounds are mainly on space, aerospace, astronomy, um, program development, education, um, and then software development um, uh, as well. And as you can see, we're, uh, we've been around the block uh, several times. You know, we're, we're, we're older. <laughs> um, and those are kind of like the affiliations that we've had uh, over, over the years. And we basically have worked on either public or private uh, side of the space industry while we were in the US and, and also in, 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 uh, in Europe. Um, and so uh, for us, we, we came to, to, you know, to EHF with the really uh, several assumptions. And one was that, uh, that exponential technologies today is really democratizing the space industry. Uh, so that's kind of like one major thing. The other thing is that because of that, uh, the space economy or the global space economy is going to reach about a trillion dollars uh, in about um, you know in about twenty years, and so that's a really great opportunity. But the challenge here is that it's not uh, really distributed. Uh, most of the the space uh, industry today is only being done by. Uh, you know, nine, nine countries in the world, so 75% of, uh, of the global economy is. And so uh, with that as a problem, uh, we wanted to make sure that that, that, that um, we 
you know, uh, we can actually even that out um, in, uh, in the future. And the way to do that is to basically start these ecosystems around the world in developing and emerging countries. So that's our moonshot, uh, no pun intended, uh, but that's sort of like uh, our, what we kind of uh, sort of came into to um, the Edmund uh, Hillary Fellowship uh, with. And so uh, over the past two and a half years, we've really focused on how do you actually, um, you know, catalyze that, that industry. And we focus on education, entrepreneurship and collaboration mm -hmm. of which uh, uh, firstly, we try to educate people on the opportunity um, and the technologies that are available today anywhere. Um, and then on the entrepreneurship side, we try to help catalyze uh, projects and, and uh, startups here in New Zealand. And for the past two years, we run like two national space challenges, aerospace challenges uh, here to do that. And on the third side, um, we also tried to, because of, of leveraging um, uh, prizes, we've also tried to engage the different kind of like economic development organizations and incubators and, and other uh, professionals kind of like all over the country. So, and, the, and the company we started is called Space Base. Yeah. So uh, for the session today, as I mentioned, uh, this is going to be all about like our, our own uh, journey um, during this particular two and a half years. And so it's, it's more of a practical session of, of what do you do, uh, actually when you start from scratch, um, as a, as a company or as an organization. And, and again, the disclaimer is that, uh, this session is based on our experience and, uh, we, you, we recommend that you definitely seek out, uh, you know, experts in, in creating businesses and legal advice, which we'll be, be talking about, uh, all of those resources, um, in, in this session. So yeah, to begin with, yeah, know your tribe. So uh, we were very fortunate, as uh, again, as Paula uh, said, we started our, our fellowship in October of 2017, but, but actually we, went, we became nomadic uh, about the beginning of that year. And we did some trial kind of like periods in New Zealand. We were here for about, you know, two months in, in, in Auckland, two months in, in uh, Wellington, just to like, really to try to understand New Zealand. Um, and so uh, basically for us, because we are starting a new industry, uh, we tried to figure out where in, in New Zealand are the pockets of industries that uh, could resonate well with like being part of, of, a, of a space economy. And so uh, basically we talked to government, we talked to uh, all of the already existing kind of uh, outreach types of, of, of space companies uh, uh, in, um, in New Zealand, um, which kind of like led to how we also created the New Zealand Space Directory. So on our website, um, we basically gathered together like what, what, where, where in, in the country are, are all of these, uh, these potential collaborators and, and partners. Um, and so that sort of like uh, gave birth to the New Zealand Space uh, Director, which was then used uh, last year by um, MB to create the uh, sort of the, the, uh, the industry uh, summary uh, for, for space uh, in, in New Zealand. So um, after kind of like uh, understanding uh, what new, where, where our market is and where customers is and where the needs are, uh, we needed to uh, understand, you know, what kind of entity uh, do we need to actually start? Um, most likely for most of you, you're already either, you've already established, but you wanna, wanna create and you, you it's, it's a company basically. But for us, because uh, as you can see, we're very mission driven and we have uh, this like long-term vision that we wanted to, to create. We are really like a social enterprise. Um, we, we, we were kind of like been waffling over whether we were a, a for-profit or a non-profit. Um, and so during this, this time um, of like really exploring, uh, we had uh, essentially talked to organizations that are very similar to, to us uh, in terms of at least in, in, in mindset. Uh, so we talked to Inspiral, we talked to Lumio, uh, we, we talked to EHF because EHF was also start trying to create uh, an ecosystem on a different scale, but we, as, just like us, we were trying to, to create an ecosystem. So we basically 
Um, also, uh, we also managed to, to talk to um, uh, Bell Gully, which is a, which a law firm here uh, in, uh, in New Zealand and pro, and pro bono, they basically help us try to understand what is the best uh, kind of like structure uh, for us uh, to to uh, to go with. So eventually, we 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 created an LLC. Um, and so for you, if you're starting uh, from scratch and you and, and you want to uh, start a company, actually the best place to really go is to bis is business dot uh, uh, because this website really kind of like outlines step by step um, anything that you need to do for planning for getting started and like all of the the processes. Uh, that you need to do um, to to kind of like to, uh, to start a company. Yeah, one theme here is that New Zealand is one of the easiest places in the world to start a business, and so uh, it's also it's ranked uh, number one in the uh, uh, by the World Bank as far as uh, the ease of of doing business. And just to kind of like as a, as a summary, when we when we did register. Um, it took us basically from the time that we went online, it was like five minutes to get to, to really uh, register your information. And then in two days, we got the, cert the certificate, which is a really fast uh, process compared to like other um, potential countries that, that uh, uh, are doing this. So setting up a company. So this is the pra practical uh, uh, things. For one, the first thing that you need to, to, to do is uh, basically, a check if the brand or the company name that, that you want to establish uh, is not already out there. So again, on business.gov.nz, uh, um, there is a one check checker that will basically check the name, the trademark, you know, web domains or social media uh, to see whether uh, your brand is, is already out there. And you can reserve your, your name um, uh, essentially for 10 bucks. Uh, and that's going to be uh, available to you uh, for 20 days um, and just to make sure that, that within those 20 days you, you, you incorporate. But you can also continually uh, up, uh, basically reserve it for another 10 bucks if, if you're not kind of like ready to, uh, to do the incorporation yet. So uh, to, to incorporate, you go basically to the company's registry um, and this website uh, here, and again, um, by the way, we will be sharing all of these slides uh, to you. And on the slides, I have been uh, placing all of the, the website links um, so that you can just like easily uh, find them. So the company's registrar um, essentially, uh, essentially is uh, where you would um, register your company. And the, the, the things that you need to, to make sure before you kind of even just like sit down and, and, and do this is that you have a name uh, that's already um, uh, kind, of, uh, kind of reserved um, as, as, as you did it in the, in the first step. The other is that you need a physical address um, in, in New Zealand. Uh, you need a, at least one director uh, that is actually a resident or, or is residing in New Zealand. There are many uh, definitions for that. Uh, we won't go in, uh, into that and, uh, and the definitions are, are already in in the registry. Uh, you need at least one shareholder. A shareholder can be an individual, a New Zealand company, or um, an overseas legal company um, uh, as, a, as a shareholder. So those, uh, and then the, the, uh, the fee is I think right now about 150 bucks. So you, you can re recheck that, but- um, New Zealand dollars. New Zealand dollars. So those are the, the main, um, main uh, sort of like requirements that uh, you're gonna be um, meeting to, yep. to start. Um, yeah, so these are, uh, this is the requirement. The other thing to note as well is that uh, you do not need a constitution uh, right away. Uh, you, you will uh, uh, potentially need to upload that on the company registry. Um, but it also means that if you if you um, if you register without the constitution, you're essentially automatically adhering to the New Zealand Company Act of 1993, um, which has all of its provisions for its uh, shareholders and directors and, and and all that. And so, if you want a different uh, 
uh, different way of governing yourselves and, and doing your bylaws, then you would have to create your own, your own constitution. So just to note for us uh, as well, as I mentioned, we're a social enterprise. So it was a little more difficult, uh, at least for us, it was not straightforward. Um, we did go and engage uh, law firms uh, to actually help us draft that constitution. And eventually, uh, we based our constitution from Inspiral. Um, and Inspiral is this, uh, uh, this uh, very unique company, so one share, one vote, no dividends. And so that, I, I guess, for, for most people would be very important to, to understand where we were coming from because our constitution uh, is really, really a charitable one. Um, and that will affect kind of like even our funding as we, as we talk about funding uh, kind of like later on. Uh, the other thing to, to note uh, as well is once you've registered Again, you would want to, to register your trademark um, as well at some point, so your trademark and your logo. Uh, and you can do that at the New Zealand Intellectual Property Office um, uh, as well. So the other thing um, uh, is to, so once you're, you're fully registered, the next thing to make sure is that you're gonna be tax compliant um, for, for the company. Uh, and so, uh, basically, you do that by applying for an IRD number, uh, and you do that in the Inland Revenue um, um, Ministry, and that's kind of like a, the website. And for this, all you need is um, to apply for your IRD. Really, is uh, is again your 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 uh, your your number, your your company uh, registered number, and, and and a physical address. Also, if, um, if you think that you're gonna be earning over 60K annually at the get-go um, when you register, uh, you need to also register for, for, for a GST uh, ID. Um, and, and then you can then uh, pay your GST every like three months or six months or, or, or a year. Now, uh, the tax year in New Zealand is from April to March. Um, it's a little, uh, at least for us uh, Americans, it's a little different because uh, for, uh, for us it's, uh, you know, start from January to December. So there is a, there's a not, not a mismatch there. So every, every time that I do taxes uh, uh, as well, it's a little bit more complex than, than normal. Uh, the other thing um, to, to note is uh, for us, uh, again, from the get-go, we we hired accountants right away. So because it it makes it easier uh, for you to be filing your your taxes and, and your your company filings like um, every year. We've uh, there's there's many um, uh, kind of like companies in New Zealand that can do this. Uh, I know that I think uh, um, EY is 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 one that uh, uh, the Edmund Hillary F uh, Fellowship has a. Uh, partnership or collaboration uh, with. We've also used uh, PWC um, and then currently we're using Fairground. Um, one other thing about accounting as well is that uh, to make sure that that you're always uh, up to date, of course, you'll, you'll probably uh, get a, a, an accounting platform. So one thing is that Zero is is the main accounting platform here in New Zealand. Uh, we started out with QuickBooks, and I'm just pointing this out because most, if you actually do hire accountants in New Zealand, uh, they're normally using Zero, uh, and so if you're using QuickBooks, they would when when they do your annual filings, they would they would actually have to transfer your QuickBooks data into Zero. So and might they, as and well they'll, and they'll charge you for and that. and they'll charge you higher. <laughs> so, uh, might as well from the get go use zero. <laughs> At least this is uh, from uh, from our experience. Let's see. So um, it's who you. Uh, oh yeah, and before oh actually before before I, I go there uh, in terms of the bank accounts, uh, it's actually very easy to to start a bank account here. Uh, once you've already uh, set up all of the, um, all of your IRD numbers and 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 being registered, you can uh, you can set up uh, bank accounts online. Now, uh, as an individual, before we actually came to New Zealand, we were able to set up our individual bank accounts even before we got here. 
So c banks like BNZ and ANZ, uh, ANZ uh, can um, allow you to kind of like start that process um, and, and even got, uh, you know, do the bank transfers and then you claim uh, your, your account once you set foot in New Zealand and, and you show that, that you are actually going to be a, um, a resident kind of like here by um, also showing like a, like an, a physical address um, when, when you're here. All right. So the next section uh, here is uh, really more on the soft side of, 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 uh, of starting a, a business. And for us, I think the most important thing here is like, it's who you really know uh, that will make you successful. Uh, so networking is, is for, for me uh, even, is like, it's, it's really on, on top uh, there for, for having a, a, like a successful uh, organization. So for us, uh, the, the Edmund Hillary Fellowship uh, basically made us um, uh, understand kind of the, the, the whole ecosystem in New Zealand uh, better and then uh, also open up so many doors for us when we first started. There are many hyper connectors uh, within EHF um, and uh, within either the, the, the main um, organization and management itself, but, but at the same time also, especially the, the Kiwi uh, fellows who are um, already on the ground uh, when, when, when you arrive, uh, they are kind of like our window to everybody else within New Zealand. It's not a joke that people say that it's, uh, you know, there's only two degrees of separation, between uh, everybody in, in New Zealand. So uh, definitely, for one, uh, I think I, we used our LinkedIn um, connections uh, really well um, in terms of like finding the, the kind of like the, the right people that we need to, to, to talk to. The other thing um, that is really important uh, is that, so in New Zealand, um, there's, there's, there's official regions within New Zealand that, that, that actually kind of like work um, and collaborate together, but at the same time uh, are also uh, entities within themselves. And so the economic development uh, organizations, uh, I think there's about 14 um, of them and, and the, with different regions. Uh, those are, are, are actually our, our first go-to for uh, trying to understand kind of like the, the business landscape within the regions in, in New Zealand. So uh, for us, because we are, we, we are catalyzing kind of like an, in, uh, like an industry within a nation, we, we, we wanted to uh, kind of be involved and collaborate with all of the, the regions. But most likely when, uh, when you start um, and you're starting a company, you probably start from where you want to base yourself um, in, in like either the city that you want to base yourself in. And so the best, the first uh, people that you should really talk to are the EDAs, so the Economic Development Agencies. So for us, we're, like right now we're in Christchurch, our partnership with Christchurch NZ, um, we probably would not be here uh, without them um, because they've been uh, really um, kind of like our, our partners with the projects and initiatives that, that we've been um, working on for the past kind of like two years. And at the same time, um, within those organizations, they also have industry experts. Um, uh, basically, they have account managers for the big industries that are within their domain, so they, which is why it's, it's really good to to know people there because depending on what industry you're in, either you're in energy or your health, they would have those uh, particular experts within the organization. And, and most of what we're telling you here is they would have a full-time person to help right. you with. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other, uh, other uh, kind of like NPCs these are like city councils uh, as well. So uh, when, when you are within a city, it would be good to, to talk to people uh, there because also the local governments know what the needs are and, and what their, their kind of like their capabilities. The other thing uh, as well is that um, that we've that at least we've found is that uh, depending on your industry as well, there's always an association connected to a specific industry. So, uh, so just one example is like um, if you're in agri agritech, there's agritech NZ. Uh, if you're in an engineer, there's engineer NZ. 
there's uh, so there's like X and Z. So if you if you go Google um, uh, stuff, there's always uh, those kinds of organizations that depending on on uh, yeah your background or your experience it would be good to connect uh, with with those people because it would be a window to the industry that you want to be playing in um, social media connections uh, as well so there's a lot of uh, of organizations uh, here that have social media presence uh, like um, um, uh, I'm blanking with, the, with, with, with some of the, the and just, was, just for us uh, on the space side, we started a meetup in Wellington, um, and then uh, subsequently uh, there, are, there are meetups on space um, like in Christchurch. Uh, there's also one in, 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 in Auckland. Um, and, uh, but then there are, are also um, organizations that have a presence like online and on, on Facebook. So you, you need, just need to find uh, those and, and be part of them. And one last thing, if you are a social enterprise, just like us, um, I do uh, definitely recommend talking to uh, the Akina Foundation. So Akina is uh, the, I think the, is for me, I think it's the one-stop shop for really understanding uh, how social enterprises work here um, in New Zealand. They, they, they do advice and they also do workshops uh, as well for, for uh, social um, enterprises, specifically kind of like here in New Zealand. So uh, yeah, this is just uh, what finding. for finding the the economic development uh, agencies. This is the kind of like the website that the the um, does list them. Okay, so um, we all know this phrase that when in Rome, do do as the Romans do. <laughs> so I'm just basically uh, uh, saying here that uh, you know we came to New Zealand. We were visitors and we're foreigners. Uh, and uh, we're so so happy that we've been integrated uh, uh, here for the past uh, two and a half years, and we've been welcomed with open arms. And for for us, I think it's it's uh, I feel like it's my obligation to understand what New Zealand uh, culture and uh, way of, of 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 doing and and uh, and business is is all about. Because uh, uh, basically, it doesn't matter, you know, how great you are outside, or if you're a rock star, or or that you're you've been very successful outside. Uh, but uh, here, you know, you're coming into a new country. Uh, you need to understand uh, sort of like how uh, it is that it, it is the, that it's done here. Um, and so I, I think that's I think one of the the, the things to to, to note. So uh, some of the kind of our lessons learned uh, during the time that. Uh, we've been here. Um, I think cult culturally, uh, for one, I think uh, you know the, the business here is based on relationships. Uh, I think that's one thing that we we really um, um, yeah trust built based. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely trust based. Uh, uh, you you know it, it sometimes there's a joke that you need to have like three uh, coffee or tea meetings before you actually you know establish that rapport and and uh, um and and trust um with with the people that uh, that you you kind of like uh, want to really work with and once you kind of like establish that trust and that opens up kind of like a a, a lot of things for you because they, they, then the, their networks are open up to you um uh, as well um and so yeah, it, I know that uh, that uh, in, in this time, you know, it's it's very hard to do a face-to-face -face meeting. Um, uh, but uh, you know, the video video conferences like this definitely helps a lot with trying to understand um, uh, and and uh, establish kind of like relationships. Um, uh, the uh, the other thing uh, as well is that. Um, uh, Coming from you know, coming from Silicon Valley, we've we've been so used to you know the kind uh, sort of like entrepreneurship, can-do attitude, uh, uh, risk uh, uh, taking. Well, I'm really happy to say that that's kind of like the whole ethos of New Zealand. That's uh, uh, the the, the can-do attitude here is even much stronger, I think, um, than we're kind of like I I or we came from. Um, it's uh, it's this notion that you know the the people would think well that's really possible but we'll do it anyway so because because there is this this 
kind of like this positive attitude of, of, of trying to do something new. Um, yeah, and, and it permeates into uh, government. Uh, also, yes, that's um, surprising from the U.S. perspective. Yeah, and and uh, I think one thing to note is because I think of uh, New Zealand's isolation, uh, this this notion of of um, being able to uh, kind of uh, do things by uh, you know by themselves, uh, it's it's really more ingenuity uh, more so than than innovation. Um, and so that's very, very strong um, here. Uh, some other things is that, well, for one, sustainability and stewardship is the top of the line um, uh, here. So, uh, you know, uh, and, and for us, that's, that's uh, it's such a refreshing thing uh, to be um, working in an environment where environment is first and sustainability is first. Uh, compared to again other places that that we have uh, been to or, or 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 places that are that kind of like are, are happening today. Um, let's see. Uh, so uh, in terms of being an EHF fellow, um, I actually thought uh, as well that because we because we came in sort of like. Uh, you know, through uh, through the eye of a needle, <laughs> uh, because there is a there there really is is a lot of um, kind, uh, kind of like checks and validation for you. It feels like you've been sort of like you've been validated coming in. Or vetted. Or yeah. sorry, yeah, the, actually, the, yeah, the word is vetted. And so uh, when we do get uh, introduced everywhere, kind of like in New Zealand, and you, you talk about yourself as being an EHA fellow, um, there's there's, I think that's that contributes a lot to to being welcomed uh, because you have been vetted um, already. That the, and, and people, there's a certain amount of like trust that comes with with the name. Um, let's see, is there anything else that I? I for... Oh yeah. So one what one challenge, uh, or maybe there's there, there's the one two, two things that we've we've also learned is that. Um, uh, that New, Ze New Zealanders are, are, are very humble. <laughs> so uh, it's kind of like, it's very hard to, to find who the specialists are because they don't really, um, you know. They don't promote they themselves. They don't promote themselves. Again, very different from where we come from. <laughs> so it's kind of like, it's a little harder to, to, uh, to, to. Yeah, you'll yeah, we'll find that, that some people do amazing things and it takes forever to find out that, you know, that for them to talk about themselves. And so we've, we've taken to the uh, uh, asking somebody about their friend because they'll promote their friends, but they won't promote themselves. Yeah, and so, so I think um, something that comes in line with that, which is sort of like a challenge as well, is I think there is a, there is a bias though uh, for uh, New Zealand made and New Zealand created because it is a, a very, um, um, se you know, self, um, uh, create, uh, yeah, they, it, there's, that's something that you, you probably um, uh, experience and takes kind of a little bit uh, to, to kind of... Um, yeah, so I mean, it, it can be a, a, a problem if, you, if you're coming in bringing something from the outside. Um, it, it really needs to have a local connection. Yeah. yeah. So um, on the funding side, um, as I mentioned before, because we are our, our constitution is is uh, is a charitable one, we actually we don't go and look for investors. Um, but we were fortunate enough that okay, so for the first two years we were self -sustain sustaining, um, and so we're, we were self funded. Plus the other thing is that uh, the the third person in in our in our company is also an angel investor and so we were lucky to have that kind of like um uh sources uh of, of resources to 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 start however um i'm just gonna put out some of the the ones that we've at least um come across with in terms of like funding so the economy development um, agencies uh, in new zealand also does have some gr some sources of resources so you should uh, should definitely look at uh, at this um some of the industries that they uh, that they definitely focus on are like agriculture and health and energy callahan innovation has grants um as well especially if you're a tech uh, or uh, in 
a tech company or um, if you are in the stage where you're doing R&D, uh, they uh, have a starter uh, grant um, that is uh, about like 5K. Then they have other like project and research grants as well, like for deep tech, um, especially those that are uh, focusing on really uh, new and and uh, like you know high highly risky uh, type of ventures and they also have partnerships for uh, doing r and d in their labs things like that yeah so. Um, so in terms of of uh, sources of funding, there are angel investors in New Zealand um, and so every single major kind of like uh, major city so as, as I've um, outlined here. Uh, Angel HQ is Auckland, uh, so, sorry, uh, uh, Angel HQ is, is, um, uh, is Wellington, Ice Angels, Auckland, um, Canterbury Angels uh, here in Christchurch, um, and, so, and so forth. Uh, the, the one thing that we have actually done at the, at the end of last year is we did a crowdfunding campaign. Uh, and so Pledge Me is one, um, one platform that is, that is uh, was created here in New Zealand and is, is the one that is really the most popular, um, at least uh, to use. Um, and then, but it, uh, and then snowball effect is uh, one where you can also uh, do equity um, uh, crowdfunding. And uh, we can talk uh, on that as well um, uh, later on. So um, the last section here is like, uh, uh, basically there are resources for new or, or startup companies. Um, and, well, and for one, uh, as an Edmund Hillary fellow, and for us, like this is really just an amazing, uh, amazing uh, kind of like benefit, is the, the you know, uh, BNZ, the Bank of New, new Zealand has, um, has basically opened up their partner business centers all across the country for HFLs to use. So this is the equivalent of your co-working space, meeting space, uh, you can you can set up events um, uh, as well. We've been yeah we've had big events and these things uh, uh, for free for free. Um, so uh, and there are there are BNZ partner centers all across the country. So it's certainly one one uh, to to use. Um, uh, in terms of incubators uh, as well, we so we personally have not used an incubator, but we've partnered with incubators. Because, uh, as I mentioned before, we run the New Zealand's um, aerospace and space challenges, and we've actually also run a virtual incubator ourselves with um, in, with the collaboration of um, actual incubators on the ground. So, so here's three different types of incubators. Here, um, Callahan Innovation has, uh, has incubators that that they actually support, and so. Uh, there's one one that's actually just like starting up uh, this this month um, of April, and there's four that they that they kind of like support across the country. Uh, the economic development agencies that I mentioned um, earlier on, some of the big ones are are basically connected and support uh, incubators. So, for example, Auckland. Um, the AT uh, EDA uh, is is uh, is basically um, supporting Grid AKL, um, you know, Wellington with the um, Creative HQ, and then universities also are affiliated with incubators. So um, just these are just examples of of some of them uh, as well. Um, business mentors. Uh, so this one is. Uh, it's an interesting um, one where we actually we just si signed up recently. Um, the business mentors program for less than three hundred New Zealand dollars a year gets you one mentor for for the whole year, um, and so they will pair you with uh, with actually a specific uh, um, individual uh, here in New Zealand who could. Further, like help you with with um, with your your startup with your business, which I think was a was a a, a, a big um, benefit. And then lastly, um, you can find interns. So for us, uh, we had two interns that uh, we had engaged uh, last year uh, as well uh, from the University of Canterbury. So there are um, master students that, depending on what they're working on and their projects can actually um, 
be you know, uh, be an intern uh, to to you for several months, depending on what you, what your needs are, and and they can uh, certainly um, uh, kind of like match what what uh, what you need. Um, and Callahan Innovation is also doing that as well, especially for those who are um, working on R and D. They will fund in their in thank you uh, interns. Yeah. Yeah. So I will end here. Uh, this is just, uh, uh, again, who we are. Uh, our, if, uh, you can find us through our emails. Um, we've got resource, resources uh, as well online. We, we do a podcast, um, our website, um, and then we uh, also curate uh, several Facebook groups and, and as well the meetup in, in Wellington. So uh, thank you so much. <laughs> Let me stop here. Thank you so much, Eric and Emmeline. It was really amazing to see your journey there and all of the really useful resources that you are sharing. Um, one uh, question that was brought up earlier, and actually I want to know as well, is uh, why you saw New Zealand in, in the first place? Because you came uh, earlier than EHF, had applications open, and I remember that then you were thinking already about New Zealand. So. Uh, so I want to know about New Zealand and also why Christchurch because you were here first. You were in Wellington <laughs> first and then you yeah. left us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a really great question. Um, for us, uh, I mean, there, I think there's there's a personal reason and that there's there's also a, a uh, definitely a business reason. For one, on the personal side, I mean, we've been coming to New Zealand since like 2002 uh, on on kind of like vacations. Uh, we're both outdoor people. We love nature. Uh, it's just we fell in love with with the country, kind of um, uh, location-wise, and, and the people that we've met uh, uh, over here. Uh, but on the other side, on the on the business side, we actually really believe that it is the best um, place to prototype a space sustainable um, e ecosystem. Um, and you know, we do this with, with our presentations where uh, to have a sustainable space ecosystem, you kind of like need to tick boxes. Um, and uh, some of those uh, essentially are a very progressive government, um, which um, is, is, is really very, um, um, uh, I think the, the reason why, why um, the, the success of Rocket Lab. Um, you do get a happened. feeling that, uh in New Zealand, the government works which, uh, surprisingly well. <laughs> it, it just, <laughs> and so that's, that's a, quite a surprise. Yeah, uh, yeah so uh, there's already a, um, basically a space infrastructure and, and capability with Rocket Lab. Uh, there's a tech entrepreneurial and, edu uh, and educational uh, ecosystems or high, high, high educational systems that are already here. And then location wise, uh, yeah, probably that's even the, 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 the kind of like the best reason for it uh air traffic wise uh it's it's best for launching um and uh and and so the and the as i mentioned the and you know the culture as well of, of risk takers and, and also why christchurch uh, uh, uh why christchurch the basically christchurch right now is very focused on becoming the airspace hub for new zealand uh, in their sector plan, that's uh, one of the ones that they, they focus on uh, as their super nodes. Um, and so there is, so, so which means that there's already buy-in within local government and there's a big manufacturing uh, base uh, here uh, as, as well. Um, and so I think it just ticks all of the boxes um, for, for us. Um, yeah. Back when we were trying to start uh, our our aerospace challenge, uh, space challenge, that we just went down and gave one pitch to uh, Christchurch, and they uh, said yes, and uh, and within a couple months we had one uh, month. We, within one month, well, I was thinking about all the other partners we had. Oh, yeah, 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 with we had almost thirty partners, uh, organization partners, within a couple months, and so it's um, so they're really ready for new ideas in you know a lot of a lot of ways. That's very good. Another question here, sort of a general theme that's come through is, would you sort of say the comparables between setting up a, a US corporate or a B Corp or LLC, how, is that comparable to some of the options you had when you were setting up in New Zealand? That's an interesting, um, uh, that's an interesting question. So 
uh, it, well, uh, in in the U.S., there's this different, um, you know, there the the legal entities. So you can be a corporation or you can be an LLC. Like they're two separate ones. I think in New Zealand, there's only one, uh, and so if you, you can either be a sole proprietor uh, ship, you can be a partnership, or you can be an LLC. Those are the three besides the 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 charitable trust. So uh, yeah, if you're setting up a, co a company here, that's basically your choice. And there's um, there's no equivalent of a benefit corporation at this point. Right. There are people are working on that, but it, it doesn't fit. And also the uh, the charitable trust in New Zealand is a little bit more restrictive than a nonprofit in the U.S. Um, uh, it really has to be for uh, you know. Uh, uh, Poverty, yeah. education, uh, and uh, and community. Oh, yeah. and, and there's also a, there is also a religious uh, aspect, but uh, option. But it, but so in 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 the U.S., the nonprofit is a little bit broader. But that that's just one thing we encountered. So that kind of answered one of the questions there, because it was also um, why did you choose to do a nonprofit business as opposed to going down the charity route? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, and, and yeah, just to, to elaborate, basically we did uh, try to, so we, we set up an LLC and here you can, um, uh, you, you can register to be a charitable company. So which means that if you, if you make that cut, you can take in philanthropic funding. Uh, but as, as Eric was like saying, uh, it's, very, it's a lot more restrictive here. And we come into the category of uh, business and economic growth, which is not a charitable. Yeah, um, yeah we, we made it, we did an experiment, uh, made an effort of rewriting things and making an application to be a charitable trust, but um, it got rejected and, and it made sense. It just, we just didn't yeah. fit in their category. Thank you. Um, I wanted to, I know that you mentioned before about a bit about your, your fellowship and your experience as a fellow. Uh, so what is one person asked about uh, what's your relationship with other fellows and how, how different is for you to be part of New Zealand being a fellow uh, and, and how that community supports you along the way? Yeah, um, and so we value the, our, our EHF community uh, well, especially like now in lockdown, uh, you know, we, we have a lot of like online uh, uh, digital hooies um, or digital meetings where um, for one, we're very close with our own cohort uh, ourselves. Um, so each time that you go in as a group, um, kind of like you bond because you, you, you get to do like a kickoff and an orientation in the beginning. Um, so it's, that's kind of like one, but at the same time, there are platforms and channels that we collaborate together. Um, and, and so we, we cut across cohorts when, when kind of like we, we collaborate. So in terms of us, in, um, with, with space base, um, because we've, we've run these challenges kind of like all, all, all over the past two years, we've uh, recruited, um, our fellows for either, you know, as judges, mentors, uh, we've had like um, one very prominent um, fellow uh, be kind of like an MC for for our um, our events uh, as well. Um, we've we've introduced fellow investors to some of the companies that we've been mentoring, and they have gotten funding um, as well. Uh, so so yeah, the uh, within fellows th themselves, um, there's there's definitely a, a great community to, to leverage. Um, and, and also internally, we have this kind of like asks and offers where if you have something that you can offer, you, you can offer it to the community. Uh, but at the same time, if you need something, there's also a way to mobilize kind of the, the, the entire community um, to kind of like rally to your cause. And the, and the fellows also, it's a tremendous global network too. Yeah, that, yeah, that's the other thing as well. I mean, I, um, I always joke around that like if I was, uh, if, if I was applying now, like I probably wouldn't get in because of just the caliber of the people that are that are coming in is just mind blowing. Um, and, and so there's, uh, there's a lot of, of, uh, of kind of like, uh, uh, even like at the moment, like even untapped opportunity uh, there.
for collaboration. I, I just wanted to also say that because you mentioned a lot how fellows have supported you in your journey. I just wanted to say that Eric and Emily are the first fellows that have moved to New Zealand and, and they have been really, uh, they draw a really high bar for the rest kind of because they have been amazing and the work that they do and the support they provide to the community. And this session it, that now is public, they have been doing this for fellows forever. <laughs> Uh, because they are the first one to try to set up a company here and kind of I, as outsider getting to know the New Zealand and the EHF community. So I just wanted to flag that because uh, you've been organizing like the meetups in Wellington, meetups in, in Christchurch and being really uh, hands-on on everything about the community, not only business-wise, but also like community-wise. And that has been like a great thing to see uh, as uh, EHF evolves. So I just wanted to flag that. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> Michelle, you have one last question? Um, oh, one that just sort of popped up is what, um, in your short time that you've been here, what industries do you see are emerging and that, um, you know, people should, could be looking at or the types of people that could apply might be liking to see? Yeah, that's now that I've actually had COVID come up, it's actually kind of changing it all, really. So it's probably yeah, even creating yeah. even more new industries. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's really a good good point. Um, and then, uh, so just to, to, to note that because we are so much focused on, on starting an aerospace space uh, industry, that, that's sort of like what we've been, we've been focusing on for, for quite a bit. Uh, but for one, uh, well, as part of that, that that I've seen that um, that's emerging are kind of like uh, data um, data related companies. So uh, meaning um, there there are now uh, a, a bunch of like data analysis companies that are leveraging um, you know space technology or or, or, or space data remote sensing uh, that are popping up here that are using data for applications on the ground. So which means you know agriculture. Um, uh, more um, um, sort of like monitoring. Uh, yeah, and uh, there are a lot of skills here. There's, uh, you know, uh, we're also trying to help a uh, startup of a uh, artificial intelligence uh, uh, connected with space uh, data uh, in Australia and New Zealand. And there's a group, a lot of groups here working on um, applying artificial intelligence to uh, space data, but there's other groups that are doing AI work. And, and then there's a big, you know, uh, 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 virtual reality, augmented reality uh, development teams here. There's, uh, and of course, there's the, uh, all the uh, uh, fancy uh, special effects from movies the and things like that. Entertainment uh, on and on industry and, you know, on and, on. Uh, as well. and then one thing to, to, to notice that um, my understanding is that Agritech uh, here in New Zealand is, is actually world class. Like uh, when their when their teams go to California, the Californians are really impressed. You know that with the uh, uh, precision agriculture technologies that are developed here. So yeah, there's there's a lot of uh, capability and opportunity. And of course, also uh, green green renewable energy uh, as well um, is another uh, like major theme too. Yeah, yeah, someone well, has just asked about um, any pre-seed advice for startups, but I've just asked did Benny if he can add a bit more detail and colour to the question, because that's quite broad. Mm. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Um, I think, well, I think one thing that in general New Zealanders need uh, that EHF fellows, people coming from the outside, can is better connections to the outside uh, global uh, networks and uh, and especially like partnerships or or ways to take a, a something that you develop in New Zealand and then take to the next stage uh, you know for global markets things like that that that's uh, we we run into lots of New New Zealand entrepreneurs that basically sort of hit a wall and say uh, we don't have the networks or we don't know what the next step is for for taking our ideas out to the world and so. Uh, I think there's a uh, potential, uh, you know, that's one, one value that somebody, that an outsider comes, comes in with are these better connections. And then I think uh, as well, because uh, the EHF fellowship has investors and entrepreneurs um, 
uh, and I think we we ourselves still need to to uh, do better kind of like uh, understand and curate that, that so that the entrepreneurs can actually uh, find more uh, uh, kind of uh, or matched better with the the uh, investors that, that, that are coming in because there's just uh, a lot of uh, ideas and pool and talent um, uh, and potential uh, startups that could come from the entrepreneurs that the investors part of, of the, the fellowship um, can can actually leverage and, and, and also look into uh, as a, a potential source of invest uh, investment. So the last question, just got a bit more detail on that pre-seed. So it's about if you're developing a prototype, an app or something, um, is what sort of assistance is there in New Zealand so that you can kind of get to that MVP stage before you go to investors? Uh, I would go check on Callahan Innovation um, because that's really what they're, they're focused on is uh, really, uh, you know, high tech or, or deep tech uh, risky uh, new ideas that might not be funded by like regular investors or, or angels. Um, and so if you are in the kind of like the prototyping um, uh, uh, stage, that's really what they're looking at normally. Yeah, and they really understand uh, the needs of the, uh, of the startups uh, at that stage as compared to other government agencies I've dealt with. Perfect, thank you, Pauli. Thank you so much. Uh, we are like one minute over the finish time. So um, I just yeah, wanted to, sorry? A view of uh, why we're, we're doing fine in, in our lockdown. We have a nice view out here. Oh, nice. Of course, like that is easy, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's the one of the perks to be here in New, <laughs> in New Zealand. Yes. Oh, I wish. I wish we had that view, but in New Zealand it's easy to get that. Um, we are so lucky here. So thank you so much, Eric and Emeline, for showing to, showing us today uh, how is it done, how you done it, and and uh, all of your experience has been like three years in New Zealand already. Uh, yeah, we yeah, are so really lucky to have you here. Yeah. Yeah, and we've we've started our our our, our process of, of uh, applying for our permanent residency um, already, and so yeah, we we love it here, and hopefully New Zealand will take us. <laughs> yes, yes, I hope so too. I'm sure it will. Uh, I have left in the chat window a feedback form for all of you to let us know how we did it today, and applications for cohort eight are open until the first of June. And it's the last opportunity that we have this year to access the Global Impact Visa. So if you're interested about applying or curious about EHF, I will definitely recommend you to go to our website and make sure you check it out. And, and if you have any questions, you can reach to us in, um, through like social media or uh, there are different webinars coming up about the application form and different ways of applying. And also we are doing many other workshops as part of the New Frontiers uh, Digital, uh, many other fellow experiences. And uh, so check our web website that uh, we, you, you will see new sessions coming up. Every day we are trying to lock new people. And we also wanna know if you have any topics that you think we should be covering. So thank you so much for joining and see you. Bye.